Here's the last chest, I believe. Alright, now we can just focus on this. How does it light everything else? I guess maybe a fuse of some kind. The fire of knowledge. Correct. Harmony was achieved for the Pythagoreans when multiplicity became unity, when many thoughts combined to form one original idea. Well, more parkour for me. help if I fall. Yes. How enlightening. Very funny. Enlightening. It's actually kind of funny. Wait. Those are symbols. I've seen them before. They're from the Apple of Eden earlier in the game, and we, uh, Found it. Okay. You're freaking me out, dude. Don't do that shit. Give me a little mini panic attack. I don't like that. I don't want to restart this whole mission again, please. Make it real good progress. Those are actually symbols that you see later in other Assassin's Creed games. Unity is achieved, but the door is not opening. Leonardo, come here. You recognize these symbols? No. Wait. These are the symbols that were shown to me by the Apple of Eden. They are in the wrong order. 
Let me just... If I rearrange these... Done! Those are not Pythagorean symbols. 43, 39, 19, N, 75, 27, 42, W. Nothing. The cult of Hermes is wrong. The number is meaningless. You are leaving? No mere number can repair the world. Come, my friend. Help me charter a ship to Navarre. I must finish with Cesare Borgia. It is not intended for us. Ezio, what are you not telling me? What else are you working on? Well, I have begun several dissection studies. Then King Louis XII seems interested in hiring me as an engineer. Oh, yes, I'm thinking of repainting the St. John lost in the Villa Fire. Salai would model for it again, of course. Then, perhaps I will study a woman with child to see how her body changes. Interesting. Tell Tempo of Pythagoras. This was a great DLC. You can just see Desmond now. We have the information we needed. It's too late. The damage is done. He seems to have entered some kind of coma. He'll find his way out. He always has in the past. I've run the data through the computer. We have a location for the temple. Then what are you waiting for? Let's go. go. Yeah, and for those who don't know, that is actually the coordinates that led him to the temple that they go to in Assassin's Creed 3, but we aren't going to get there yet. As you heard, Desmond has fallen into a coma, and that is what transpires in Assassin's Creed Revelations, which is the next game that we are going to play in the Assassin's Creed franchise, or at least I'm going to make a walkthrough for, and I definitely look forward to it. But I always like how they actually made this that DLC very important while also just really in, entwining it within this game itself. It was just really well done. I thought it was really well done. And we got 100% sync, so that's good as well. Now let's see if we actually get a cutscene from Leonardo here. I cannot think of anything else to make for you. Hmm. I guess not. All right, well, we're going to fast travel to the Tiber. We're going to finish this game off by heading back to the Tiber. And then just kind of like seeing all the memorabilia that we got. And then I will pretty much finish off. I have that song stuck in my head for some reason. Very good song. I always found the Family Guy joke really funny, you know? The one where it's like they take the Cantina Band from Star Wars and they it's like, Alright, we're the Cantina Band. Got any requests? Shout it out. Sing the same song. Same song. Here we go. Every time I hear that, I just die laughing. Not literally, but uh, it's like one of the funniest jokes that they have in that movie. 
it's hysterical to me. Well, not to the point where I'm going insane, but you guys know what I mean. You catch my drift. The reason I'm going here is to see if it spawns up to Leonardo thing, and if it does it one more time where he's like, I can't make you anything, then I won't even worry about it anymore. I used to think there was a cutscene after on the bench of him talking about how we arrested Cesare. I could be wrong about that, so, I mean, it's a possibility. All right, we're gonna test this out one more time. One more time and one more time only. And then I'm not gonna try anymore. I promise. I'm just trying to be thorough. I'm trying to think what gaming author I want to do next. I'm not sure I want to do Revelations. I kind of want to prepare for Revelations. Kind of like double check my outfit system for that. So I might like play a different game. A really short one. Before I really start that one. So. Don't expect me to be making Revelations like right off the bat. Because I just want to double check a few things on that one, I guess. Ugh. Oh my god. I survived it. I'm a G. Why do I have no parachutes? Seems a bit odd. Careful. Yeah, get the hell out of my way. Just for shits and giggles. I just like using Narrow Storm so much now. <laughs> Alright guys, let's hope for a cutscene, because I'm pretty sure there is something. There has to be. Okay, there doesn't have to be, but I just kind of want there to be. Ezio, the papal apartments are in turmoil. Cesare is ill and the Pope dead. It was your doing, was it not? Leonardo, I swear to you, he did not die by my hand. This world gets stranger every day. I shall have to focus on my painting. I work on the small portrait of a woman. I'm growing rather fond of it. Do not let a beautiful girl distract you from constructing my designs. I have no worries. Women provide little distraction. Wait, I don't get it. <laughs> uh, I knew it. I remember that. Something. Look for the chalk outline on benches. See, I told you. I told you. I'm glad we went back. You have all that I can give. Now you're on your own. They really do work the uh, fact that historians, some historians believe that his Leonardo da Vinci was gay. Which is completely fine, of course. It's completely fine. I don't give a shit what you are. But I just find it funny that they really work that angle hard. And there is evidence that suggests that is true. I actually did the research myself to see if they were just fluffing it up. And, like, it isn't, like, guaranteed true. But there is some evidence that many historians kind of look at and go, Yeah, we kind of think think he is but they just kind of took that angle and went with it and I'm kind of glad it did it created a very unique character out of Leonardo in this game now if Leonardo actually saw that he might be like and it, what if he wasn't what if he wasn't and he's up somewhere like the afterlife of some kind like I don't know whatever you believe like some sort of afterlife and he's just watching this going like what the fuck I'm not I'm not what the hell so I was just weird I, he was good at work Sure, he stole my money, and kind of I was his baby daddy, but... <laughs> okay, not baby daddy, but sugar daddy. But I just, I really thought it was really interesting for them to go to that angle, to that extent. And to even add that little cutscene at the bench with him at the end, that's really cool. That was always re really cool to see. It was really funny, too, and he's like, Women provide little distraction. And Ezio's just like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> what you mean by that?
All right, well, I'm just going to stockpile on ammo before I start reading memorabilia. I don't know why it gave me out of parachutes, which is just kind of weird. No, oh, well, it doesn't matter right now. Alright, let's go check out all the collections that I got. Start off with the guild crest over here. Start off, we have the thieves guild crest. This crest was a gift from the thieves after completing all their challenges. Mercenary guild crest. This crest was a gift from the mercenaries after completing all their challenges. Courtesan guild crest. This crest was a gift from the courtesans after completing all their challenges. The finally, the Assassin's Guild Crest. This crest was a gift from the Assassin's Recruits to honor your skill. And it looks pretty badass, too. Now, what are these? Machine Gun. This machine gun was designed by Leonardo da Vinci for the Borgia. All other models have been destroyed. Naval Cannon. The Naval Cannon was designed by Leonardo da Vinci for the Borgia. All other models have been destroyed. Bomber. The bomber was designed by Leonardo da Vinci for the Borgia. All other models have been destroyed. And then finally we have the all-destructive tank. Tank. The tank was designed by Leonardo da Vinci for the Borgia. All their models have been destroyed. Of course we have all the armor right here. I think this was leather right here and this was steel plate. I am wearing the Brutus armor right now which would go here and this was the special kind of leather looking armor and this was the special metal plate looking armor which is looks pretty badass now let's start looking at all the different paintings starting off we have portrait of lucrezia borgia lucrezia borgia left the vatican after her father's death to live with her husband alfonso dieste in the villa belrigardo outside the city of ferrara let's look at these paintings right here Angel. The painting by Raphael shows an angel standing beside Nicholas of Tolentino with the devil at its feet. This work was completed in 1501 as part of a larger altarpiece. St. Michael. Raphael painted this work for the Duke of Urbino, who Cesare had chased from his palace. In it, St. Michael is combating the demons of hell. Let's, move down. Let's just move down the line, and then I'll just pick up all the uh, assassination targets based on the order that we got them. Angel. This angel painted by Raphael stood next to Nicholas of Tolito with the devil at his feet. Raphael finished the painting in 1501 as part of a larger altarpiece. So I'm guessing that's part of that one over there. Vision of a Knight. A painting by Raphael about the role of the ideal knight. The sword, the book, and flower represent the scholar, soldier, and lover, each making up a piece of the personality of the ideal knight. Madonna Sali. An early Madonna painted by Raphael between 1500 and 1504. Two of his signature motifs, the virgin reading a book and a small bird, can be seen. 
I'm gonna go ahead and read all the paintings first, then I'll read the targets. Mon Crucific Crucifixion. Originally painted for an altarpiece in the church near Raphael's hometown of Urbino, this crucifixion is signed by Raphael is signed by Raphael at the foot of the cross. Christ Blessing. This famous portrait of Christ by Raphael bears a striking resemblance to the artist himself. St. George. An early painting by Raphael of St. George slaying the dragon. Marriage of the Virgin. This painting by Raphael depicts a marriage between Mary and Joseph. In the background, the painting showcases the Renaissance ideals of order, geometrical architecture. And I could definitely see what they mean by that. Alright, going down the line. Saint Sebastian. This painting by Raphael depicts Saint Sebastian and one of the arrows that was used to kill him. Uh, damn, that's a, that's kind of bad turn. Resurrection of Christ. Raphael's resurrection of Christ employs complex geomet ge geomet geometry to create such a dramatic composition. This is one of his earliest known works. Madonna del Carlino. Raphael's Madonna was painted as a wedding present for a friend. Notice how the composition of Mary, Jesus, and John the Baptist is arranged into a triangle, as was common at the time. Portrait of Pietro Bembo. Be Bembo, I think that's how you say that. Supposedly a portrait by Raphael is one of Lucrezia's lovers, the poet Bembo. The picture... It sounds like I'm saying Bimbo. Bembo. The picture barely resembles him, leading to speculation that the per person portrayed is someone else entirely. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it appears that most of these pictures are painted Raf Raphael. And this seems really empty for some reason. I don't, I don't think it is, because I bought every picture I possibly could. I don't know, I'm getting a little bit paranoid. I'm getting paranoid, people. No, I'm pretty sure I bought every picture. Or else I wouldn't be able to get 100% sync, I think. Alright, let's read all the targets. Lucrezia Borgia left the Vatican after her father's death to live with her husband, Alfonso Diaste, in the Villa Bellagrigardo, outside the city of Ferrara. Alright, I just re reread that because we're reading all the targets now. Portrait of Juan Borgia. Date of death, 1503. Also known as the banker, Cardinal Juan Borgia was assassinated while throwing a risk party. With his dead, Cesare was deprived of his battle funds. Next was the Baron de Venois. Portrait of the Baron de Venois. Date of death, 1503. The Baron de Venois was assassinated inside his Italian camp. After his death, his troops fled in disarray, depriving Cesare of his French army. After that, it was Micheletto, even though we technically never killed him. Portrait of Micheletto. Micheletto, I think is how they say it. Micheletto fled from Rome after Cesare's arrest. Pope Julius II imprisoned him, then he vanishes from the history books. Like the mysterious person he is. Portrait of Rodrigo Borgia. Date of death, 1503. Pope Alexander Rodrigo Borgia was killed by his son Cesare inside the papal apartments with a poison apple. And then finally, Portrait of Cesare Borgia, date of death 1507. Cesare Borgia was assassinated at Vienna as, his, as he attempted to defeat the Count of Larin and regain his glory as a commander. And so ended the Borgia reign of the Italian Templars. Now we do not know what happened to the Templars after this, but we do know for certain that the Borgia's reign had ended that day. What the hell? There's just a bunch of noise going on in my house and scaring the crap out of me. Alright, but I'm good. Yep. Just trying to figure out what the hell that was. But, make no mind of it. Pretty sure I have bought every single painting because there's only five at each and every one of the paintings, I believe. Either way... Either way, that will be the end of this. I have read every single memorabilia item that isn't, like, you know, weapons or, like, 
just stuff I really just wanted to go through and read all the paintings because we never really got a chance to look at them. And I bought them all way back in the day, which was a Wednesday, by the way. I love that joke. But, you know, we bought them, never really looked at them, but I wanted to take time to look at them now that everything's kind of completed. And we have everything done, 100% sync, even the DLC. And if you guys stuck around this long to see me just finish off the game in such a fashion by doing everything else left after the main game, then I, I truly have to thank you. I can't thank you enough. This game w took so long to finish because I kind of just put it off a bunch. My recorder broke at a time and I had to learn how to use a new one of a different kind. I also had to move to a new computer at the same time while trying to finish this up and it's just been kind of a crazy ride since I began this walkthrough. If I missed anything, if there's anything I missed at all in this game that didn't make it a 100% walkthrough like maybe a conversation outside or maybe a few paintings that for some reason I didn't buy which I'm pretty sure I got all of them. But yeah, if I missed anything I'm sorry but I really hope that this either was helpful to you or this help um, just kind of let you listen to something or watch something as you were just like doing something else and you're just trying to catch up on Assassin's Creed or you just wanted to check out the old days back in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I'm more than glad to make these walkthroughs for it and I certainly enjoy doing these walkthroughs a lot because I love these games. I love Assassin's Creed. It's probably my favorite game series out of anything and I just love the story. I love the gameplay and I just love almost everything about it. We've sure had our bumps along the way but it definitely was an amazing ride. So again guys before I sign off and end this walkthrough. I just gotta say thank you and be sure to check out some more videos in the future.